Mexican girl without arms, and how the new Mexican Barbie doll comes with her own set of immigration papers. But now, join us for a segment on the economy, where we investigate its health science. I'm Hannah Foster, and today I'm joined with economists, economic specialists, Emma Gray and Jen Cashman. Great to be here. The first topic I want to talk about is the main indicator of economic health, GDP, or gross domestic product, which measures the total value of all final products produced in the country, but only the finished product. The current real or cost adjusted for inflation, GDP, is $15.09 trillion. Wow, that's a lot of money and a lot of beach houses. Well, it is all the business done in the United States for the entire year, but that still is a huge number. The United States actually has the largest GDP in the world. How does that compare to past years? Compared to the growth rate in 2011, 1.7%, 2012 12's overall growth rate is an increase of 2.6%. But our GDP is actually probably lower than that because that includes inflation, right? No, one of the perks of using real GDP is it actually integrates inflation changes. This positive change means that our economy is growing, which we would hope for after the recession that we've been in for several years. In the 2000s so far, the GDP has generally increased. In 2009, there was a small drop, but the economy has continued to grow since. That's an opti optimistic start for the next few years. Where do you think the GDP will go from here? The GDP will probably continue to grow. Even if conditions are poor, GDP includes government spending. So unemployment benefits and social welfare keep it from dropping too drastically. It sounds like if the nation's economy is growing and prospering, then as we, uh, then we as retirees, students, or Channel 4 news anchors benefit from this prosperity as well. That's right, Hannah. Now, let's move on to our unemployment segment, where we will be taking a call from one lucky person tonight. And our call tonight is from Susan in California. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I took a year off from my job to take care of my new baby, and now I'm ready to go back to work. I'm looking for a job, but I do not currently have one. So do, does this mean I'm unemployed? Well, Susan, to be unemployed means that you are a person ages 16 or older who is looking for work and cannot find it. So yes, you are considered to be unemployed, but more specifically, you're frictionally unemployed. You will be until you find a job. Don't panic, though. Frictional unemployment is like a voluntary unemployment. People usually become frictionally unemployed if they are switching jobs, or if, like you, they took a leave to care for a child. The good news for you is that you may be able to go back to your old job since you took a maternity leave, so you will likely be back to work soon. Thanks for calling, Susan. Now before we take a commercial break, let's look at, take a look at some unemployment statistics. Well, the current unemployment rate in the United States is 7.6%. This is measuring the percent of people in the nation's labor force, force that are unemployed. The ideal unemployment rate for our nation would be under 4%, but we are doing better than previous years. In January of 2011, the unemployment rate was 9.1%, so it has dropped 1.5% since then. That seems pretty good, because it's going down, but there is a negative side to this. The slow rate at which it is dropping is, in a, is a sign that the economy will continue to grow, but at a very slow pace, and it's not expected to pick up pace for a while. Thanks for the update, Emma. And thanks for calling, Susan. We will be right back after this commercial break to discuss inflation in today's economy. A lot of you probably aren't entirely sure or understand how inflation works, so let's do a quick rundown before we get into the statistics. Inflation is a rise in the general level of price goods and services in an economy over a period of time. In long term time terms, gasoline could be an example. The price for one gallon of gas in 1940 was 18 cents a gallon. 18 cents. Now that price is inflated to around four dollars a gallon. Whoa, that's insane. Crazy how inflation works, and it's definitely not in our be best interest when it's high. You're getting like less for your dollar, right? Pretty much. You have decreased purchasing power. Inflation is measured by calculating the change in price index, or the CPI, consumer price index. And that's a measure of the prices of a market basket of goods in an economy. So inflation is the percentage rate of change of a price index over time. Let's go to the numbers. What is the current inflation rate? The current rate is 1.5%. This is a decrease from last year around the same time, it was 2.9% then. And then the year before that, it was around the same as now, 1.6%. I wonder how that compares to past economic events. Well, the inflation rate during the Great Depression in the 1930s reached a crazy low of negative 
and in the 70s it averaged around 8%. So this suggests that in the, in the past our economy was really unstable and it's beginning to level out and remain relatively constant. The inflation rate for a healthy economy lies around 2%. That's good. So there has to be some benefits to this inflation thing, right? Yep, inflation benefits the economy because it ensures that central banks can adjust real interest rates to, d to decrease recessions. It also encourages investment. But inflation is bad for our economy because it increases the opportunity cost of holding money and shortages of goods can happen because people think inflation will happen in the near future and stock up on all the goods. Wow, that's really interesting. I understand now. And I'm sure that our viewers do too. Yeah, tune in at 10 to hear about the future story of my life as a merman and more. Thank you, and this has been Channel 4 Action News.